Okay, so uh, today I'll be talking about uh, non-convex sampling with the Metropolis Adjusted Langevin Algorithm, and this is joint work with Nishif Vishnoi. So I'll start off by talking about our problem setting and motivation, then I'll talk about uh, the Metropolis Adjusted Langevin Algorithm, or MALA for short, uh, then I'll talk about some problems with the traditional Euclidean error analysis of this algorithm, and how we uh, get around these problems to obtain uh, faster uh, running time bounds in many situations. Okay, so I'll start off by talking about the problem setting. So we're given access to the gradient of a function f, and our goal is to generate a sample from the Gibbs distribution proportional to e to the minus f with uh, some TV error epsilon. Uh, so we consider two settings where f is smooth. So the first setting is when f is weakly convex, and the second setting is when f is uh, non-convex. Uh, so some applications of this sampling problem are in integration, computing expectations, uh, Bayesian inference, and optimization of non-convex functions. Okay, so now I'll talk about uh, some uh, prior work in this area, as well as the result uh, that we prove. So for the setting where f is weakly convex, one can sample uh, from uh, the Gibbs distribution with uh, TV error epsilon in a number of uh, function evaluations that grows like uh, dimension to the 2.5 and uh, also grows uh, logarithmically with uh, 1 over epsilon. So this was proved uh, for uh, the Balwak algorithm. Okay, so if you want to uh, sample specifically with uh, the Mala algorithm, then the current uh, best bound in uh, the weakly convex setting uh, grows like uh, dimension cubed and uh, polynomially with uh, epsilon. So this is a bound for the number of gradient evaluations. Um, okay, so this is for the weakly convex setting. And in uh, the setting where f is non-convex, uh, we can also, one can also bound uh, the, uh, the number of uh, gradient evaluations that you need to sample uh, from the Gibbs distribution. And you can do this, as the bound this uh, number of gradient evaluations as a function of a quantity called uh, the Cheeger constant of the target distribution. Um, so currently, uh, the best, so in this particular uh, non-convex uh, setting, uh, the best uh, current bound in terms of the Cheer constant grows like uh, the dimension squared times one over square of uh, the Cheer constant. Okay, so now I'll talk about uh, the result that uh, we show. Uh, so for, so in our setting, we assume that we have access to an oracle for the gradient of f, and we're also given an initial point, which is a warm start uh, for our target distribution. So uh, in this setting, uh, we show that uh, the MALA algorithm can generate a sample from uh, the Gibbs distribution with some uh, TV error epsilon in a number of gradient evaluations, which grows roughly like uh, dimension to the two-thirds uh, times one over the square of the Cheer constant uh, times this uh, smoothness constant C3, and uh, also grows uh, logarithmically with uh, 1 over epsilon. Uh, so uh, the main uh, point of this result is uh, for applications where these uh, third and fourth order uh, smoothness constants are relatively small, then we obtain an improvement on uh, the running time of, on the, on the number of uh, gradient evaluations that uh, Mala needs to uh, make to sample from uh, the Gibbs distribution in this uh, non-convex uh, setting. Okay, so this was for the uh, non-convex setting. So in the weekly convex setting, we also uh, obtain a similar uh, improvement in uh, the number of uh, gradient evaluations as well. Okay, so what is this uh, uh, MALA algorithm? So uh, MALA is a Markov chain uh, whose stationary distribution is equal uh, to uh, the Gibbs distribution that we want to sample from. Uh, so one way to think of uh, the MALA Markov chain is to consider a particle in a potential well F and this particle uh, moves according to the laws of classical mechanics. So at each uh, step in the Mala Markov chain, we give our particle a kick with a random init Gaussian initial velocity, and we then uh, approximate the position and velocity of this particle after uh, some uh, time eta. And uh, this new uh, position that we obtain is uh, a pro our proposal for the next step in the Markov chain. Uh, however, in order to ensure that we're sampling from the correct stationary distribution, we can only accept this proposal uh, with a certain probability, and in this case, uh, the probability, the acceptance probability depends on 
uh, the extent to which our approximation for the position and uh, the velocity of the particle uh, conserve, uh, the, conserves the total energy of the particle. Uh, so in order to bound uh, the acceptance probability, all we have to do is to bound uh, the error for our approximation uh, for the position and velocity of the particle. Okay, so how can we bound, how can one bound uh, the mixing time of a Markov chain in a non-convex setting? So one way to do this is uh, to consider a quantity called the Cheeger constant of the log density. Uh, so uh, roughly the Cheeger constant uh, describes the extent to which uh, the level sets of the log density have uh, bottlenecks. Uh, so one can bound, uh, it turns out that uh, one can bound uh, the Cheeger constant in uh, when the uh, log density is uh, weakly convex. And uh, one can also bound uh, this Cheeger constant in many non-convex applications as well. Okay, so how does one bound uh, the, the mix, how can we bound the mixing time? Uh, so it turns out that for a reversible uh, Markov chain, one can bound uh, the mixing time by roughly one over the square of uh, this Cheeger constant times one over the square of the expected step size of the Markov chain. So in our case, uh, the expected step size is roughly the acceptance uh, probability of each step times uh, the uh, step size eta of our proposal. So our goal is to show that MALA has a high acceptance probability even when we propose uh, large steps eta. And if we can do then the, that, then this will imply a fast bound on the mixing time. Okay, so uh, how do we bound the acceptance probability. So to do that, we have to bound uh, the approximation error for the position and velocity. Um, so uh, to bound uh, the approximation error, we can notice that the highest order term in the approximation for the velocity is approximately equal to the Hessian of uh, the log density at the current point in the Markov chain. Uh, so this means that our approximation error depends on how quickly the Hessian changes in the direction of motion of the particle, which, uh, and the direction of motion is uh, uh, roughly the uh, kick that we gave the particle, which is this Gaussian initial velocity. Okay, so the problem is that in many application, this uh, Hessian ends up changing much faster in uh, a small number of uh, worst case directions than when traveling in a uh, random Gaussian direction. So to get around this problem, uh, we would like to perform an average case analysis, which ignores these rare events when uh, the velocity points in a worst case direction. And by doing this, we're able uh, to then uh, obtain um, a much tighter bound on uh, the error for the uh, position and velocity than would be possible uh, by if we had used a worst case analysis. Okay, so. Uh, how do we uh, perform an uh, average case analysis and why does this uh, make sense uh, to do in, in uh, applications and, and of interest? Uh, so in many applications, uh, the, function, the log density f turns out to be a sum of component functions where each component function only changes in a single direction uh, with uh, the direction being determined by a data vector. Uh, okay, so this, for this class of applications, it, uh, this means, this implies that uh, the third derivative of uh, the log density satisfies a certain uh, Lipschitz condition, uh, which basically says that uh, the third uh, derivative when traveling, of, of the log density when traveling in uh, the direction of uh, the motion of the particle is bounded uh, roughly by this uh, infinity uh, norm uh, of the velocity of our particle. Um, and this infinity norm is d defined in terms of uh, the data vectors. So it's not the usual infinity norm because we have this X transpose uh, inside, inside the norm. Um, okay, so uh, one can show that this uh, property is satisfied uh, for a small uh, smoothness constant C3 uh, if the data satisfies a certain uh, incoherence property. Uh, so how does this, uh, uh, condition, uh, this Lipschitz condition help us obtain tighter bounds. Uh, so since our velocity is roughly Gaussian distributed, this means that our infinity norm of uh, the velocity of the particle grows roughly like uh, the logarithm of the number of data vectors, 
whereas the usual uh, traditional Euclidean norm grows like the square root of the dimension. So by performing our analysis in terms of this infinity norm, we're able to obtain a much tighter bound on uh, the error for the velocity, and position then would be possible if we had used uh, sort of worst case Euclidean norm analysis. Okay, so basically uh, we prove bounds for mala as a function of the Gita constant, and we use this to obtain faster bounds for uh, sampling from a large class of weakly convex and non-convex uh, distributions. Uh, so one question we still have is, can we improve the explicit uh, dependence on dimension of our bounds to the conjectured value of d to the one-third? And another question we have is, can we obtain bounds for a smoothness uh, condition which has small constants for a larger uh, class of targets? Was is, is, that, is that dependent essential? Uh, one over the square of the Cheeger constant. Yeah. So uh, there are other, so if, I think for the Cheeger constant, it's usually one over squared, but there are sort of stronger, uh, there, there's stronger conditions where you don't have the square, where you don't need the square. Uh, but the focus of this work was uh, to improve the dimension dependence on top of the, on top of the Cheeger constant. Um, so oh, you have uh, log, log Sabolev inequalities, for example, where you don't need this uh, square. Okay, so um, 